Senior Plasma Physics Lecture 13. We continue with gaseous electronics or discharge physics and in this lecture we're going to examine sheaths. In earth-based plasma systems the plasma has to be contained in some kind of vacuum vessel. That naturally means that the plasma is going to interact with the walls of that vessel. In this interaction a space charge region develops, that is, a region that's not quasi-neutral but has a net charge. We need to derive the dependence of the electrostatic potential on the distance away from the wall in the sheath. The sheath. In most gaseous discharges, we find that the electron thermal speed is much greater than the ion thermal speed. That means if some kind of metal wall is next to a plasma, then electrons are lost to it much more quickly than ions. So the plasma then develops a positive potential relative to the wall. In this diagram, on the left hand side we have a metal wall or a metal electrode. Next to the wall, there is a very sharp rise in the plasma potential. This region is known as the sheath. There is also a region after that where the rise isn't as steep. This is known as the pre-sheath. Here we will only examine the sheath region. Our main objective is to obtain an analytical expression for the potential of the sheath. To do that we need to make a few assumptions. That it is a one-dimensional problem. There are no collisions. The drift velocity of the ions in the sheath is much greater than their thermal velocity. Usually in the bulk of the plasma, where there is no sheath, it's the other way around, that is, the drift velocity of the ions is much less than their thermal speed. However, in the sheath, this is reversed. We also need to apply the Boltzmann relation to electrons. We'll also ignore any ionization or recombination reactions in the body of the plasma. The way we're going to obtain the potential is to solve the Poisson equation, given by this in one dimensional form. In order to solve the Poisson equation, we first need to obtain expressions for the densities of ions and electrons. We start by saying that the flux of ions at the wall must be equal to the flux of ions from the plasma. This is just simple conservation of charge. It can be symbolized by this, where Ni is the density at the wall, Ui is the speed at the wall, N naught is the density in the bulk of the plasma away from the wall, and U naught is the speed in the bulk of the plasma. We start by conserving the energy of the ions. The kinetic energy in the sheath and the potential energy, where Z is the charge on the ion, must equal the kinetic energy in the plasma. Rearranging this, gives the drift speed of the ions in the sheath, Ui. Now we need to obtain an expression for the ion density by using the conservation of flux, where we substitute the expression for ion speed in the sheath into the expression for conservation of flux. Rearranging this, we obtain this expression. We now need to obtain an expression for the electron density. For this, we use the Boltzmann relation. Since now we have Ni and Ne, we substitute them back into the Poisson equation, which results in the following. Now, this would be quite a difficult equation to solve for phi. So we make some assumptions. We solve for phi in the region at the sheath edge, where the electrostatic potential energy is much less than the electron thermal energy located here. And we also make the assumption that in this region the ion drift speed Ui is much greater than the ion thermal speed. We then use the Taylor expansion to make the following approximations. We expand this term to first order and we expand this term to first order as well. If we now substitute these expressions back into the Poisson equation above we obtain the following where x squared is given by this expression. For simplicity, we've chosen z to be 1. Note that lambda d is the Debye length given by this expression. 
Let's define the potential to be zero in the main body of the plasma well away from the sheath, like this. So at the origin here, the potential is zero at x equals zero. This is a boundary condition that will enable us to solve the above differential equation given by this. A solution to this equation is given in the following form, where x is given by this. Note that if kt is less than mu squared in this expression, then x is greater than zero. This is known as the Bohm sheath criterion. It can be interpreted as the ions that enter the sheath have a drift kinetic energy greater than the thermal energy. So we can regard the edge of the sheath as occurring at a potential energy that's equal to this kinetic energy. If we replace mu squared with kt, we have the following. Solving for the speed u in this equation, we obtain the following expression. This is known as the Bohm speed.